In this video, we're going to apply do calculations with the ideal gas law. So we learned about the theory in the kinetic model video. Today, we're going to apply it. We're also going to learn about the Boltzmann constant. The ideal gas law is just the equation of state for an ideal gas. This is the ideal gas law here, PV equals nRT. And as a reminder, this n was the number of moles, r was the universal gas constant, and since we're going to be using SI units, we're going to use 8.314 joules per mole Kelvin. T, the temperature, just remember, it's got to be in Kelvin. And then for our pressure and volume, we can either put our pressure in pascals and our volume in meters cubed, or we can use kilopascals and liters. Either one of those combinations will use this value for the universal gas constant. Here's a review question about when we can apply the ideal gas law. So when can we apply this equation? Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So we can only apply that law when we don't have significant electrostatic interactions between the molecules. So basically, they've got to be well spaced. So we, we want to get low densities. And that corresponds to low pressures and large volumes. So A is the correct answer here. Also, you should know that your temperature should be somewhat moderate. Because if a gas starts getting too hot, it begins to ionize, and that changes the physics, and you won't have an ideal gas anymore. Here's a typical ideal gas law question. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So let's write down the ideal gas law for both boxes. So for box X, we'll have a pressure X. We'll have a number of moles of gas, the gas constant, some temperature, and we need to divide that by the volume of box X. Similarly, for box Y, we'd have a PY equals NY, RTY, all over VY. So now we just need to find PX over PY. So let's divide the two. We're going to get PX divided by PY is going to be equal to NXRTX divided by Vx. And of course, invert and multiply here. We'll get a Vy on the top and then an NYRTY on the bottom. So our two volumes are the same. They're identical boxes. Of course, the gas constant is the same for both. It's only going to depend on the temperature and the number of moles. So if we look at the number of moles, that's going to be N divided by 2. And that's going to be Nx over Ny is going to be 1 half. Tx over Ty is going to be T divided by T over 3, which is simply going to equal 3. So our answer is going to be 3 halves, which is answer B. Another typical IB question. Pause the video, try the question, come back for the answer. So of course our ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. In this case here, the volume's constant. So what I'm going to do is put everything that's a constant on the right-hand side, everything that's not a constant on the left-hand side. So I'm going to get that P over T equals nR over V, and this is simply a constant. So that means the ratio of P to T in this first book, in this first scenario, has got to equal the ratio of P to T in the second scenario. Scenario 2, scenario 1. If I solve for P2, that's going to equal P1 times T2 all over T1. Now, we have to be careful here. In Celsius, the temperature went up by a factor of 11, from 30 to 330. But in Kelvin, it didn't go up by nearly that factor. And to get the answer correct here, we've got to convert to Kelvin. So this 30 degrees Celsius is really 303 Kelvin. 330 Celsius is going to be 603 Kelvin. 
so in Kelvin, we basically just doubled the temperature. And that means we're going to get double the pressure. If we simply plug in here, we're going to get 603 divided by 303 times the original pressure, which was 6 atmospheres. So we double our pressure and we get 12 atmospheres. So the correct answer is C. Okay, a word problem this time. Pause the video, read the question over, try it out for yourself, come back for the answer. So we're talking here about a, a balloon that is first above the surface and then 10 meters below the surface. And I'm going to call it state 1 when it's above the surface and I'm going to call it state 2 when it's below the surface. So in state 1, the pressure, P1, would be 1 atmosphere. And in this case, I'm not going to convert that to pascals, and you'll see why in a second. Our volume in state 1 was 1 liter, and our temperature in state 1 was 30 degrees Celsius, but this we do have to convert to Kelvin, so that's going to be 303 Kelvin. In state 2 here, the pressure was 2 atmospheres, because we increase by 1 atmosphere every time we go down 10 meters. Our volume, that's what we want to find out, and our temperature is going to be 10 degrees Celsius or 283 Kelvin. Now the ideal gas law is PV equals nRT. But being as I have two states here, what I'm going to do is put the N and the R on this side of the equation, and that would mean that PV all over T are going to have to equal some constant. In other words, in the first state, that expression P1 V1 over T1 has to be the same as in the second state P2 V2 all over T2. That product can't change. So now if I substitute in my numbers I've got one atmosphere, one liter, 303 Kelvin equal to two atmospheres, the volume that we're trying to find out, and 283 Kelvin. Notice here in terms of the units that the atmosphere units are going to cancel out. So as long as I've got the same units on both sides of the equation, it doesn't matter whether I use pascals or kilopascals or atmospheres because the units are going to cancel out anyways. We just have to be careful with the temperature and we still have to use Kelvin there. And I'm going to let you work out the math, but you should get about 0.47 liters, or roughly 0.5 liters. So we're basically getting half the volume because we doubled the pressure. There's a slight effect from temperature, but you'll notice here in Kelvin there's not a very big fractional change in the temperature, so it doesn't produce a large change in the volume. Okay, what I'd like you to do now is to estimate the mass of air in a typical refrigerator. So pause the video, try the question yourself, then come back for my estimate. So, of course, we're going to start with PV equals nRT. Now, if you think about this N here, of course, it's the number of moles. That has to do with the number of molecules of gas. And if we can find out the, the number of moles, then we can use the molar mass to figure out what the mass is. So, as a first step, what we're going to do is try to solve for that N. N must be equal to PV all over RT. So now we need to make some estimates. Let's estimate the pressure first. The pressure is going to have to be very, very close to atmospheric pressure. Because if it wasn't, you'd never be able to open the door on your refrigerator. Every time we open the door, it becomes exactly atmospheric pressure. When we close the door, it drops a little bit, but not very much. So we do feel a little bit of suction when we open up that door. But if it were significantly different from atmospheric pressure, you'd never get the refrigerator door open at all. So as a good estimate, let's go for 100,000 pascals of pressure. For our volume, well, our height is certainly bigger than a meter. Our width and depth would be less than a meter. But as a decent estimate, a bit of an overestimate, but at least one significant figure, I think we can go for one meter cubed would be about the volume of a refrigerator, a little on the large side. Temperature, we're talking typically around 8 degrees. 
course, we need to put our temperature into Kelvin. I'm going to go for 7 degrees just so I get a more round number, but the temperature is going to be somewhere around 280 Kelvin. And of course, if these are SI units, that means we're going to use R equals 8.31. So the number of moles will be equal to 100,000 times 1 divided by, say, 8.3 and 280. Multiply that out, and you should get an answer of around 40 moles to one significant digit. Now, inside the refrigerator, we've got air. And air is 80% nitrogen. So for nitrogen, the molar mass is 28 grams per mole. So the mass of the air should be roughly 28 grams per mole times 40 moles, giving us an answer to one significant figure of about a thousand grams or one kilogram. So the air in your refrigerator would actually weigh more than say a grapefruit in your refrigerator. Now, we've been writing the ideal gas law, PV equals nRT, so we're writing it in terms of the number of moles. You might at times see it written in terms of the number of molecules. And if we use a capital N for the number of molecules, the number of molecules will be equal to the number of molecules per mole times the number of moles. Of course, the number of molecules per mole, that is Avogadro's number. And the number of moles is, of course, what we've been calling n. So this number of moles is going to equal the number of molecules divided by Avogadro's number. So if we take this and put it into our ideal gas law, we get that PV equals n all over Na times R times T. Now, we don't really like to write it this way because there's two constants here. So it usually gets written as n times another constant, kb, called the Boltzmann constant, where kb would be equal to r divided by Avogadro's number. And this kb is called the Boltzmann constant. Now, you don't need to remember the Boltzmann constant. It's in your data booklet. It's right here. 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 joules per Kelvin. And you might notice that it's going to be equal to the universal gas constant, 8.31, divided by Avogadro's number, 6.02 times 10 to the minus 23. There's also another interesting application of Boltzmann's constant. We had said that the average kinetic energy of the molecules was proportional to the temperature in Kelvin. In fact, we said that temperature was a measure of the average kinetic energy of the molecules. So that really means that that average kinetic energy will equal some constant. Let's make the constant C times temperature. Well, it turns out you can prove. We're not going to do it here, but for an ideal gas, it turns out to be true that this constant here is given by 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant, KBT. You don't have to remember this equation. It is given in your data booklet as well. So with this Boltzmann constant equation, this Ke average equals 3 halves KBT, we're able to solve questions like this. What is the average speed of a nitrogen molecule in air at 27 degrees Celsius, or 300 Kelvin? Pause the video, see if you can find the answer. So what we're going to have to do here is rate the kinetic energy as a half times the mass of the molecule, N2, times the average speed squared. That's going to have to equal 3 halves times Boltzmann's constant, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23, times the temperature in Kelvin. So now all we need to do is find the mass of a nitrogen molecule. 
Well, nitrogen has 28 neutrons and protons in it. So 28 nucleons. It also has electrons, but the electrons have no significant mass. And you can look up in your data booklet for the mass of a nucleon. Could be either a proton or a neutron. But it's about 1.67 times 10 to the minus 27 kilograms. Each nitrogen molecule would be 4.7 times 10 to the minus 26 kilograms. So let's plug in. We're going to get 1 half, 4.7 times 10 to the minus 26 times that average speed that we're looking for equals to 3 halves, 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23 times 300. You should get an average speed squared of 2.6 times 10 to the fifth. And then taking the square root of that, you should get an average speed of about 500 meters per second. So in summary, our ideal gas law is PV equals NRT. Make sure you have that temperature in Kelvin. R will be 8.31 as long as you've got pressure in either pascals together with volume in meters cubed or you can go with kilopascals and liters. If you have two states of a gas where you're not adding or subtracting any molecules, that is where the number of moles is constant, then you can write P1 V1 all over T1 equals P2 V2 all over T2 and solve. And notice in this equation, as long as the pressures are in the same units and the volumes are in the same units, it doesn't matter what units you use for P and V. T though has to be in Kelvin. Thirdly, we could write the ideal gas law in terms of the number of molecules. And when we did that, we got that PV equals N times this Boltzmann constant times T where the Boltzmann constant was equal to 1.38 times 10 to the minus 23. And we also saw an equation relating temperature in Kelvin to the average kinetic energy per molecule. And once again, that involved the Boltzmann constant. And that was simply that the average kinetic energy would be equal to 3 halves times the Boltzmann constant times the temperature in Kelvin. And that's all for today, folks. Thank you very much.